Hello, everyone, and welcome into the Dynasty Fantasy Football Rankings Roundtable, Legendary Upside Thinking About Thinking and Davis Matic. We do these once every couple of months. We have a sheet where we all do our Dynasty Rankings. You can get Pat's Dynasty Rankings on Legendary Upside. You can get Jacob's Rankings on Thinking About Thinking. And you can get my Dynasty Rankings on davismatic.com. Patreon.com slash Davis Maddock. We are here. We are a little bit emotional this morning, just full, full, uh, full context. We we did and refreshed our rankings after an NFL Sunday. We also have all been watching NFL football for the last three <laughs> weeks. Um, so as people who came into the season expecting um, teams to score points, expecting touchdowns to be scored, we are a little emotional. Pat Thorman tweeted this out. Um, we are now on a three-week downward trend. We're like, oh, it's going to get better. Lack of preseason, it's going to get better. The co- nope. We we are now three consecutive weeks of total points per game going down. The NFL points per game right now is lower than an Iowa Hawkeyes college football game total average. You know, like the the, the average point score is under forty right now in the NFL. We are we are seeing some of the worst quarterback play that I can ever remember, ever. Um. And that does really bleed into dynasty fantasy football guys. Cause the big deal is if you've got like two studs right now, like if you, if you happen to have a Saquon Barkley team with like any other good player, you're probably winning because most players are not scoring points. And that is uh like 90% of players going in your lineup are like getting you nine points and that's it. They're not doing anything. It's kind of brutal. Yeah. It's, it's kind of interesting how to think, of how this affects the dynasty meta because the only players that are scoring points right now are running backs running backs um and generally it's a pretty high risk endeavor to like heavily invest in running backs in dynasty right it's 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 one thing you know to 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 see extremely successful running back heavy drafting redraft seasons that that happens but in dynasty over the long term like you probably don't want to be super overweight on a bunch of Saquon Mixon types, but those are certainly the people that are feeling great about winning their leagues this year. And then part of the issue is like, there's some level of bell curve to it where it's like at a certain point, do you want to expend a ton of value in these really young sort of long-term quarterback wide receiver assets that are really struggling to score points right now. And then at the other end, like maybe as you get a slightly further down the price curve, since nobody is scoring that many fantasy points right now, are you prioritizing a little bit more of the youth in the long-term view than the immediate production if that immediate production is, is providing less value over replacement? So uh, at least what I've tried to do in my ranks is I've tried to punish some of the guys that are really not scoring at the top end and then um, really try to prioritize some of the longer-term value growth at the bottom end, which is not generally how I've ranked as much in the past, but that's kind of what I'm trying to do to adjust to this. I, I don't know how you guys are are trying to approach the the current shitty meta into your rankings. <laughs> kind of the way I thought about it was I do really I really want to reward the super high end point producers at the skill position players. I thought I thought that was one of the most obvious things to do. Like I I moved up Lamb, Jefferson, Chase, Harrison, neighbors, even even St. Brown, Rashi Rice, Nico Collins. I moved all those guys up higher than a lot of the quarterbacks. Um, yeah, because a lot of the Same. quarterbacks are are not scoring points. The the thing, as you were talking, Jacob, the thing that I thought was interesting was this would be a great time to have a super team with a lot of old guys where you're just like, fuck it, I'll trade any youth I have, any pick I have, because there's only like nine guys in the league scoring points, or unbelievable time to be tanking. Uh, just a great unbelievable time. time. Well, unbelievable yeah. time to be the old tight ends. Cause like, holy fuck. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's, so let, let's start out here, which uh, is something that, that people. It's impossible would... to get a tight end in, in tight end premium leagues. Is this. Is oh, I, this think you get Mark I think, yeah, I think you can get Mark Andrews. You could, you could get Mark uh, Andrews. You could get you Kelsey. Get you, want. you get Kelsey. Kelsey for a third. Who says no? <laughs> you know, like we. I, I'm we, thinking about it. You yeah, you definitely could get Kelsey for a second right now. No no question. Oh, Kelsey you for can get him, you can get him for a second from me. Like I, yeah. I wonder if that's maybe like 
it's it's week three or you know it's it's still week three we haven't finished out week three and we know that historically the market is usually really really reluctant to like i mean normally you're going for a two you're like you're getting tyler conklin back or something like right it's this is it's impossible to get tight ends in these leagues i actually do think if you know if you're content if you're one of these teams with a you know a barkley and some actual production that the ability to get like a Kelsey for basically like he's a throw in. I, I think it would be so Is Kelsey or Cole Komet rest of the season. What do you, what do you think? Who, who are you taking in that one? I still yeah, think I'm, Kelsey. I'm taking Kelsey. Yeah. But it's, it's, it's honestly, it's honestly close. Komet. It's, it's honestly, it's honestly pretty close. Um, which is, like, you guys still think Kelsey has think some stuff? I don't, stuff. I, don't, I, don't I, I don't, I don't know if I buy it. Like, I don't know. 35 year old comes out and, can't produce more than like 20 yards in a game like that's not i, I don't know i'm i'm pretty concerned it's it's just all yeah, gonna sure be he's it's not, just he's all not gonna, be gonna be right right he's not gonna be um you know kelsey anymore but i you know they come out in the second half of that game and it's like very clear that the offense which has not been clicking they're like let's get the ball to travis kelsey you know so rushy rice is kind of doing his role a lot better than him um, and is that's yeah. probably going to continue, but the, I'm, I'm assuming there will be games this season where here's, here's rice that. Is, rice is not able to get up They're They're taking away rice and Kelsey and they're like, beat us with Kelsey. Cause we don't think you can anymore. And Noah he's able Gray, to rack up stuff. Noah Gray and Travis Ryan, Kelsey, I, identical mm-hmm. targets per route run for Noah Gray, yeah. Thir- 13% targets per route run for, uh, for both of them. I actually do think, that is one of the big dynasty things is not only are the chiefs not, not playing well, they just don't care. And considering how highly valued so many of their players are, that is a big issue. They are, we are three weeks into the season. Harrison Butker has the most kicking points in the NFL, other than the Steelers awesome. guy. And they have kicked two field goals inside of the one yard line. So the ball is, is spotted inside of the one yard line. And Andy Reid has decided twice to just go ahead and kick the field goal. And if you really, if you, if you do the machinations, if you think about it and you go, oh, well, let's say um, one time Kelsey scores and one time uh, Worthy gets like a little flip end around on those and those, those generate touchdowns instead. We, we probably feel much different about Pat, about Kelsey. But the, the thing that you then have to project is they do not care. Kelsey doesn't care. Mahomes doesn't care. Reed doesn't care. They are pure, what is this, like 20, 2012 Patriots, just like, whatever, man, we'll, we'll show up. We'll show up to go play on the road at Cincinnati. We'll win that game. We'll beat Buffalo. We'll beat the Jets. And then we'll win a Super Bowl again. It just, they just don't care. They just do not care. At least Rushy Rice cares. He, he cares. He's the only he one that cares. Um, he was, I believe, he's, our, he's our, our rocketing up the dynasty rankings right now. We could, so you moved Rushy yeah, Rice yeah. to Rushy 16. Rice. Pat was, moved him to 18. Not very, un- very surprising here. I am the low yeah. man on Rushy Rice. You're the bear. You're not- also the low it's man a- on Pat Mahomes. So shout out, objective of da- analyst. Uh, yeah. Like, like I said, it's Monday morning. We some emotion might have been flowing <laughs> into this. I, I might be. I, I am. I am really so much is flowing. You're the bear on Patrick Mahomes. So I am now. To to explain the the skepticism, I have no short term skepticism about Rashi Rice. I expect him to basically be one of the five best wide receivers in fantasy this season. I think you can trade an early twenty twenty five first for him. All that is all good. The long term skepticism would be first off, what happens if Andy Reid decides not to coach the team anymore? That is pretty real. And then also, just from a pure this is how I feel about these players. I do not think Rashi Rice is as good as Nico Collins or Malik Neighbors or Marvin Harrison or Justin Jefferson or CD Lamb or Garrett Wilson. Like I, I think he is a physical st- tool set, skill set type of player. I think he's like a, a couple deviations worse than them and is kind of be kind of being buoyed up by this crazy volume. And I don't know if that continues you know for his his whole career basically i feel the same way about amon ross st brown and it's like still continued for his whole career right and i I yeah very good call probably continue for rashi rices and like he gets to do it on the chiefs and i'm low i'm the low man at least there's a buffer at least there's a buffer with rice where you know 
I know that the Chiefs are kind of boring now, but they have Patrick Mahomes, and in theory, they could become less boring in the future. So, like, maybe if there is ever a player that somehow comes in and, and takes a portion of that volume away from Rice, like, then maybe Rice gets that. But I, I also think that the more likely scenario is like Kelsey. Obviously, you know, we we agree, we disagree, maybe on on the exact speed of it, but it's very clear he's on the way out at this point. Yeah, for sure. Um, and Rice is kind of the new Kelsey, and so. Either Worthy is going to be the new Hill or or somebody else is going to be. But um, I think that that's the, the portion of the field that they need to work on is like who's going to be in the, the deep intermediate areas. But in terms of the short intermediate stuff, like I think it's Rice. And I'd also point out too that one of the reasons I went so bullish um, and I checked, Pat and I have the exact same wide receiver ranking on him. I think we both have him at, um, is it seven or is it? Oh, no, you I, just, Nico, I moved so. him down one after because okay. David's point on Nico Collins uh, resonated with me. I, I do think Nico Nico's like emerging as a as like a potential superstar here. Like yes, He's, yeah, that Nico so could like, score sixteen touchdowns in a season. Yeah. I think so. That, I moved him right. I moved him behind Nico on on that point. But but yeah, I'm uh, I'm at wide receiver eight now. Yeah. Okay. I, I'm at seven. I, I could, I mean, I could move him to eight. I could move him to nine. There's, I have a bunch of receivers there in a row that I think are, are all going to be in the same tier in the next rank update. But um, yeah, the rice thing is pretty real. I, I was just going to mention that the one thing that is really bullish to me is he scored the touchdown on a go ball in week two. And then he has oh, that cool. deep, uh, it was like what a 27 yard catch in this game against the Falcons last night. Like to me, that's showing it's not obviously that's not the bulk of his game, but it but shows he that he's not it. just a PPR spam. Like he can do other things, and then the yeah. defense account for him doing other things. And and also when you're when you said you know I don't know who's going to be the hill, maybe it's worthy. Like likely no one, right? No, likely right. no one will be Tyree Kill. You know that that's just like you can replace well, some you know, of what he's worthy, doing in the offense. Uh, I, I, it's three games into his career. He he. I I the targets per route run is very bearish right now. I I think there's more to come from the Xavier Worthy story. He looks sure. no, I do too. He he but looks yeah. pretty good to me, and he is running seventy percent of the routes. Like the the targets and stuff is is not quite there yet. But I I would not be surprised. Like let's say we do this in the summer and we're like, holy shit, Worthy just ended the year and he scored three he scored three bombs. Um. You know that that would have been Marcus Valdez Scantling drops in the past. Jacob, right. you were the only one to have the courage to rank neighbors ahead of Marvin Harrison. I ranked them I, as, as a coward. I ranked them back to back. Oh, even even today? Six. Yes, yeah, I, yeah, I did I, this. I'm still cowardly. It's a and I bet Pat is going to agree with me. This is totally a market based thing. Where like Marvin Harrison could probably suck for the the literal rest of the season. And you'd still would not get any market thing on him because of his name, the pedigree, and because he had the crazy quarter against the Rams. Like, uh, let, let me finish up the worthy point, and then I'll yeah, make the yeah, yeah. That. But the, the the just the thing I was saying on worthy is not that worthy is is bad or that he can't be much better than this. It's that the bar to become Tyreek Kill is so high, so and high. what the what the most likely outcome is is that even if worthy succeeds and he becomes like the chiefs were she rice or you know just like mm. the version of on mvs but he's good you know like those are i think are more likely outcome those would be like kind of fun outcomes for worthy right like he's rashi uh, sorry i said rush i'm rashid jaheed he's rashid jaheed on right. uh on the chiefs that could be cool right but you know, is he going to be dominating targets while also operating as the best deep threat in the league that that's unlikely just because that's an extremely difficult thing to it's do. It's just right? a, such a unicorn archetype. A unicorn. Yeah. So it leaves yeah. some of the deep stuff available to Rice, who's, you know, lighter and shiftier than Kelsey ever was. And Kelsey's a huge man. So, like, the idea that he was going to be on the outside running deep routes ever, you know, even at his best, that wasn't what he did. So it, it leaves open parts of a role the Tyree kill role to rice that that Kelsey even in his prime never had so I guess I I would just say I think you know some of the upside for rice is maybe higher than what Kelsey's role ultimately was obviously doesn't have tight end eligibility but in terms of what he can actually deliver for the offense I definitely think that's true higher. I definitely I definitely think um I definitely think that is true yeah the, all right the neighbors thing I my ranking of 
Harrison over Neighbors, and I thought hard about putting Neighbors ahead because I think Neighbors is better. Um, but Daniel Jones, he's still yeah. potentially getting benched at the end of the season because they don't want to have to give him this contract. Uh, uh, he has injury guarantees in his contract. So if he were to get hurt, you know, then what are they doing? They're moving on from Daniel Jones. Daniel Jones is bad. Um, he's not going to get better, but he is also not as bad as things. Not, not Tim bad. Boyle, not he's Skylar, not, not Skylar Thompson. Yeah. What are we going to have to suffer through with neighbors? And yeah. I know what I'm going to have to suffer through with Marvin Harrison. It's Kyler Murray being not great, but good enough. Right. Like it's going to be frustrating at times because Murray's not an elite quarterback, but he's a pretty solid quarterback. So that that just came down to it for me of like the the safety of being tied to a quarterback who I I, I don't think is, you know, kind of on the way out at some point. So for the audio listeners, I have Malik Neighbors at five overall. These are super flex tight end premium rankings. Davis has him at seven. Pat has him at ten. For Marvin, Davis has him at six. Pat has him at nine. I have him at 14. I, I guess I'm, I, I didn't know that I was a Marvin hater, but I suppose that I am. I don't, really I, don't, you, I, don't, huh? I don't, I don't really think that, I think, Jacob, that having I just like, I don't, Harrison is insane. Really insane. But, okay, but why? Because the range of outcomes for Marvin Harrison includes the C.D. Jefferson range, and I think we know for a fact that it doesn't for St. Brown, and it didn't happen this he went last ahead week. Of Jefferson in drafts, not all drafts, but in some drafts. Yeah, well, only, 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 was... to, only to idiots, Pat. Only, <laughs> only to idiots. Um, <laughs> they weren't were like in the same range right. as year. And, as as and Jamison Williams looking like a real NFL wide receiver who is not an, a, a zero, who is not fancy Marquez Valdez Scantling. It's uh, clearly we've seen how bad it is for Laporta, but it also is not great for St. Brown. Um, it, 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 his ceiling remains the same, I think, but I think his floor game to game and, and season wise is worse. Whereas Harrison, like Harrison could score the most fantasy points in football next year. And I don't really think anyone is that surprised. This is, this is, I know the first game really sucked, but this is the kind of unimpeachable pedigree that like this, like, there's a reason that some people took him 101 over Caleb Williams. Right. Well, I have him ranked a lot over Caleb Williams. <laughs> That's, <laughs> I'm not making that argument. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. I mean, maybe. So I could get him to. I, I guess I can get him over Amon Ra. I mean, I don't even really like Amon Ra. So that, that shouldn't be that hard. Um, my, my issue is like I'm not, I'm not that concerned about the trade value at this top end. Because like if I have any of these guys. They're kind of the final destination for me. Like I'm not. That's really how. That's how keep trade these cut players. It. So it's like, am I? Do, do I need to to make? I don't know. So so you guys have them ahead of all the running backs, I guess. Also, right? Is that yeah. right? Yeah. I'm ahead yeah. Of which backs. which maybe is uh, maybe is just ignorant of us in in the current meta. I see. I see that I'm the only one that's taking the Braylon Allen experience serious as well. I, I'm I'm lower on Brees Hall. I've got Brees Hall at 18. Um, oh man, you guys have him at, yeah. at 12 and 11, and I have Braylon at 81, and you guys have him in the in the hundreds. Holy moly! I guess what I would to me, the meta of the running back stuff is still like in the week three, you know, right? Like, exactly. I'm just not that concerned about like that the NFL suddenly runs through a few workhorse running backs for the whole season, it certainly has so far, but. I am looking at like Brees Hall and I'm still bringing in what I have known to be true, which is that having someone take away some of the early down stuff isn't so bad, provided he's going to get used a lot as a receiver. And his growth as a receiver yes. is now kind of two years. Like he, he flashed as a rookie. He was used a lot as in his second year. And now he's someone Aaron Rodgers is looking to frequently. So I'm still, I mean, I think the guy we should be more worried about, frankly, is Bijan. Like, remember how Bijan is a superstar and he's going to take over games? Like, when? <laughs> Which games? Like, when When are we getting that guy? Like, at least he did it. Three, he, did it. he did it in uh, a week. 
He did in week two. Bijan, Bijan was the best player in week, field, two. In, in week two. All right. Yeah, he looked pretty good in week two. And and he like he does do all the shit that coaches love. Like he had that crazy blitz pickup last night. I mean, honestly, I was lower. I'm lower yeah. on all the Falcons. I'm lower on London. I'm, I, it's just like that situation seems all right. pretty tenuous. You guys have yeah. talked me into the Harrison thing. I'm gonna I'm gonna move Harrison up to ten. I think that will still leave me being the lowest on him of the group. But I, I'll move him up to ten. Um, I, I do think neighbors ahead of Harrison is, is correct. I, I'll defend that take like na- neighbors came in and has been, what, what is he like in current scoring right now? Is he a top five wide receiver? Top 10 Ooh, wide receiver. I, I believe, I believe he is the wide receiver two behind Juwan Jennings. Oh, yeah, he looks of awesome. Course. Okay. He looks so like he looks, awesome. he looks immediately like one of the best wide receivers in the league. Like I, I think if you, if you were to say right now that he's one of the five best wide receivers in the league, y- you would sound like a crazy person, but you also might be right. Um, and I think what we've seen with neighbors, is like he's already made a pretty terrible environment succeed, right? Like I'm, I'm happy. I am a person who makes excuses for like Garrett Wilson. And uh, like, I still think he's very, very good, but he's probably pretty clearly not as good as neighbors. Cause like, all the all the excuses that you could make about neighbors normally, it's like, oh, his quarterback play has been bad. Oh, he's the only guy on his offense that's any good, so they're scheming to take away. Like all that stuff's true of neighbors, and he's a rookie, and he's just dominating anyways. And he's not just dominating through peripherals, where it's like, okay, I can envision how this would get really good if the situation was better. He's dominating with actual production. Um, so, right. like, yeah, could it get worse than Daniel Jones? Like, I guess. But there's also a whole lot of room for it to get better than Daniel Jones, too. That's the thing is I'm pretty sure Dayball might get fired if they're not able to keep this good good luck stuff going. Now, maybe they beat the Cowboys in week four and like ever it's like Dayball, Dayball coach of the year, you know, like we could could definitely head in that direction. Here's the thing, guys. The the Steelers are three and out. So Arthur Smith's getting another head coaching gig after the season. I mean, you could have (laughs) you could have Arthur Smith. And Russell Wilson, <laughs> is that what you want? In uh, New York, I mean, I, I, out, do, I do, I do want to do Garrett oh, Wilson, wow. but I want to do Richardson first because I think Richardson is the biggest faller from the first time we did this exercise to now. Now again, we are doing this exercise after Anthony Richardson just had a Bryce Young esque performance against the Chicago Bears, but this is is now my concern. Want to know that Richardson, Richardson falls into the group of guys. Who, who's still going to be good for fantasy. Richardson has not the last two yeah. weeks scored very many points, yeah. but still will put up good fantasy games just because of how he plays the game. But that then he becomes a guy very similar to Justin Fields in the eyes of general managers and coaches where they're like, what am I supposed to do with this? He can't make the easiest. He can't make throws that Skylar Thompson can make. You know, he can't just complete an eight yard out. Like he just is going to miss Josh Downs waving his hands, yelling at him to throw him a first down. That interception that he threw, um, what was it at the end of the third quarter or end of the end of the second quarter against the, uh, uh, the against the, the Bears? Quarter. The end of the second quarter. So he no. basically is rolling to his left, and you would think this is the big issue with his game. The guy weighs two hundred forty pounds. He's built like a fucking tank. We've seen him do it where they call a designed run and he just powers his way through two linebackers because they can't take him down because he's too strong. But he just decides not to do that and to throw one of the worst passes I've ever seen directly into the arms of a linebacker. That, right. that was- and then, but then he, and then he motioned, this is the most concerning part for me, after that happened, he like went like this. like He was like motioning repeatedly that it was tipped and it was like, that doesn't matter like it it went in through the air into a defender's hands and he caught it so like i don't really know if it matters whether it was tipped like i it felt like he was like trying to clarify some sort of rule like i I didn't know what he was doing but it it didn't the play showed very little awareness the reaction after the play showed very little awareness like i was just like what is this experience like it it was bad and he did do the thing you're talking about davis week one the the touchdown to make it 29 27 like when they cut it to two at the very end of the game on the fourth down he did exactly what through, guys. He like, but it, and it wasn't a design run. He was like, nobody's open. Oh, well, actually, someone was open and he didn't see him. But then he um, ran to the right and then he barreled through a guy and he got into the end zone. It was great. Um, and then this time, Trey Sermon has a touchdown pick ever. this season yeah. because of how strong Anthony Richardson is. Anthony yes. Richardson yeah. should get credit for that touch. He picked, he pushed Trey Sermon like <laughs> it was like a bulldozer coming in. Like it was yeah. unbelievable. 
So, I mean, he, he, the strength is real. The strength is very real. I, I've i been, you know, with Richardson, you come in to the season and you're like, we're going to have to live with the highs and the lows here, but the highs are really exciting and fantasy friendly. You know, the, he scores fantasy points in bunches when the highs hit. And that's what we got in week one. In week one, though, we also saw some missed throws. You're like, these lows are really going to test me. I am okay with the missed throws. Yeah. To some extent. The, some of them are so bad that it's really hard some of them are to like, watch. You never but, you don't see stuff in the NFL like some no. of his missed throws. But he then threw he a quick out to downs throws. yesterday. Like the quick out to downs was like not a pick, so it doesn't it doesn't come off as important, but it was like legitimately like a 30 foot pass, and he threw it 18 feet over his head. It, it was like stunning. Yeah, they, when he misses a throw, it's it's wild how how far from the target he can get. At the same time, he can like put it on the money, fifty plus yards downfield. So it is, and I think most importantly, Steichen, as of today, seems to be willing to like let him do his thing. What concerns me is that interception type stuff. Like if you're also making bad, like not just bad, but like horrendous decisions, then like that's how things tighten up. That's how the coach stops calling shot plays and stuff. And and all of a sudden you're like, I'm actually not that worried about though. that because that's the only way to use Anthony Richardson. If he's your quarterback yes. is to keep, yeah. is to keep the shot plays in. Like if you try and well, ask the, him to execute like a West coast offense, the results are going to be even worse. It's good. They well, got the shot that plays. The shot they, plays they, are going to stick, but what's not going to stick is the, like they, they've just come out and some, in each of the games um, this year, They've come out early in the game and they've tried to just run like a shotgun passing offense and then it it hasn't really worked. But like it's clear that they want Richardson to get reps in that. Mm. Um, but I think this offense might become, which is like what would be better for the team short term, but maybe not better for well, certainly not better for Richardson's fantasy value, and probably not better for his like real life development, is that they just go like like basically they go Arthur Smith mode where it's like Zone read, zone read, zone read, zone read, zone read, zone read, and then like one fifty yard bomb, and and like he throws like fifteen passes, and Taylor has what, 40. what because what, Jonathan Taylor looks incredible right now too, like and he's yeah if, he if they if they gave him the ball more in week two, I think they win that game. If they like he was the only thing that won them this game this week, like I, I think they might just start turning to run the offense through him. Uh no, it'll be it'll be what Matt Lafleur has done. With Malik Willis, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, so Garrett Wilson. Garrett, let's. No, let's no, I want to. I, I want to talk about Richardson a little more because I think oh, yeah. there's a larger conversation here that I I'm really curious to get your guys' thoughts on, which is, so you know, 2022 me or 2021 me would have said, guys, he was what the fourth overall pick. Franchise is yeah. tied to him. Steichen's been brought in. Um, specifically, you know, cause he, he had this hurts experience. He's like, he's, he's going to see this out. So you're getting the rest of this year for sure. You're getting next year for sure. Right. And in dynasty, it's really year to year. So he's going to go into next year as the starter. And if you want to move off and then you, you will be able to easily. Um, and in the meantime, you're going to get more of an opportunity to see if he's actually scoring a bunch of points, but we just saw Bryce young get benched. Right. Obviously, the Zach Wilson flame yeah. out um, kind of changed things maybe in the league a little bit. Um, and this like I, I think the Bryce Young one in particular, like. Obviously, he was so bad and Richardson has not been nearly as bad as Young, but just to see the number one overall pick gets sat down like that. Um, it's crazy. It's crazy. And it goes against a lot of like the conventional wisdom of the NFL. And, and I'm kind of betting on that conventional wisdom when I say stuff like, you know, Richardson will be the starter next year. Like, are, do we need to kind of reevaluate the floor on these young quarterbacks? Like could Richardson get benched at the end of this season if he keeps making dumb mistakes and, and just egregiously missing I throws? Mean, like how safe is Caleb Williams going into year two and three? Like, you know, what do we need to see from Jaden Daniels and Drake may like fairly quickly? Like this is a potential shakeup of like the dynasty market in that maybe these young quarterbacks aren't as safe as we were assuming. I think that the young thing is a little bit unique in that 
not only was he horrible, but he also showed zero like e- intriguing traits, right? Yeah. Like he he like like he was bad and he was bad in like the most hopeless way possible. Like he didn't look it was athletic. Kind of Wilson-y. He didn't he have a strong arm. There. Yeah. Uh, at least Zach Wilson had an arm. Like I think like, yes, Price Young showed not well, I mean like like Zach Wilson honestly like at least had yeah. like a couple throws where you're like, oh, that's I can see why he was drafted where he was drafted. Like it didn't work, but there's arm talent. Like I don't yeah. know what Bryce like Bryce Young had. The problem like with a, Zach Wilson is his his arm talent mostly showed up as he was like falling backwards and he's like slinging yeah. it like out of bounds. But right. I do agree he has a much stronger arm for, than Bryce for sure. Young. Like, but the, the, my point with Young is like he had no arm and he had no athleticism, and then it's like he didn't. You know, he didn't show that to be like a Tua type or, what, or a Purdy type where it was like, oh, he can like overcome some of his physical limitations because he's such a smart he's a playmaker who can't make plays. Yeah. So it was like kind of just over immediately. Whereas Richardson, like even in the bad games, like he will still have plays. Like even in this, like this was the worst game he's played as a pro, but he still had a couple plays. Like he had the one really big throw to Pierce. He had like the play where he carried Sermon into the end zone. He had one really cool run. Like just at least a few plays there where you're like, man, like, this guy could ever pull it, put it all together. Like there, there's something there. Um, and I think those it's glimpses, it's like it fields. is right. Like he, yeah. he has, but he's he one of these other guys vision. that washed out, you know, that maybe we weren't expecting. I wasn't expecting it to go like that. Yeah. Like you can at least see the vision for Richardson in a way. And the other thing that's, that he has in his favor. So Bryce young, obviously the owner remains the same, but like they have a completely new regime this year with Morgan um and uh and canalis and to me a lot of that was them being like we're not going down with this ship right like we might get right. one shot at being an nfl head right. coach and gm this is not the ship we're going down with like we're gonna go and do what's best not maybe for the long term or whatever but like we're gonna show that we know how to do our jobs and show that the rest of this roster isn't as bad as it looks show that my system isn't as bad as it looks because andy dalton can execute it and then we'll we'll do what we can going forward once, it's very sharp. It's know, very sharp of them. Basically, to like do we're going to prove to ownership that Bryce Young is the problem, and, and I'm not the problem, right? Right. And right. so far, successful. Um, and I then think, with I, the I think job done. <laughs> they did yeah. so far. Like they did success. They did Way to go, Dave. <laughs> um, with the uh, with the Colts, a little different because like I don't think Chris Ballard can survive Anthony Richardson being a bust. Like he's been there mm-hmm. forever. They have, um, uh, I believe, one playoff win under Chris Ballard in his decade uh, as GM so far. So, like, if Anthony Richardson busts, then Ballard is toast. So, I don't think he can go to Ursay and be like, give me a shot on a new quarterback. I think his only chance of retaining his job is to continue to have Jim Ursay believe in Anthony Richardson. And then, I, I think, with Steichen, like, I, I like Steichen. I think he's a good coach. But it's just hard to imagine Ballard getting fired and a new GM not getting to hire his own coach. So, to me, um, there's a longer leash there. Because the only person I think who can bench Anthony Richardson is Jim Irsay. Because everybody else in the organization, I think, is very, very personally committed to making No one let Jim Irsay know what year Arch Manning is NFL eligible. No one one let him watch the University of Texas. That gets us three years. That gets us – because by all reports, Arch Manning is committed to staying in college for four years. So he'll be a 2027 uh, draft pick. We'll see, buddy. That's pretty good for dynasty purposes then for Richardson. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, so that is fairly convincing on Richardson, although I kind of, he could get everyone fired and get benched. I think that that likelihood is, yeah. that's it's a higher that likelihood than we're say The to. only guy who can make the decision is an extremely erratic pokehead named Jim Irsay. Like he could make the decision <laughs> tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. The, um, the other guy, I mean, and it, it's way too early, right? But how safe is Caleb Williams from from a you know a Bryce Youngian type he, of he is he's super safe. I I actually I probably shouldn't have moved him as far down in my rankings as is I he did. Super I... safe because because here's let me just paint a picture. And oh I don't think God. this is a, I don't think this is all that complicated of a of, of a situation to get in. Eberflus gets fired. Okay, that's happening. Eberflus that's gets fired. Lock lock that up. Okay, so See now ya. you're playing now you're playing the roulette of the new head coach and you could get a guy we're excited about like a canalis who's going to save caleb but like as jacob pointed out once you get once you break the tie from the regime that that brought this guy in the first place you know they could now i 
I am not saying that he's going to get benched two games into his second season like Bryce Young. And he's already shown more than Bryce Young kind of ever did. But it's just like we we have this historic thing in the back of our heads of like these these quarterbacks, they're fine. Like they they have time to grow. They're going to have time to develop. Like the, the NFL does not seem to be giving these guys the time that they used to. I mean – in addition to, I mean, Caleb Williams is way better than these guys, but like Mac Jones, Kenny Pickett, like all these first round picks are just getting like moved on from after a year or two. Like that's not how this used to go. These first round mm-hmm. picks used to get like a lot of time. The fr- They were the franchise quarterback. Like it was almost maddening sometimes how much these franchise quarterbacks got to just like keep playing, even though they suck. So there is like, I think at least in terms of market perception on Caleb, like Caleb let's say halfway through next season under a new coaching staff, still not looking that great. That's not him getting benched and that's not him being unstartable like Bryce young, because he's much better than him, but it's a situation where you're going, Hmm, I wish I didn't spend the 12th overall pick and a startup on this dude. Yeah. I yeah. just, I just am nowhere near, that bearish. I, I just, I think that Caleb I'm actually is, the bullish on him in our rankings. I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm trying pretty to pretty decisively think. the lowest on him. I have 24, <laughs> you guys 16, 17. That, that <laughs> feels like if you could get Caleb right now for what ends up becoming like the 104 in this upcoming class or something, I, I think I'm, that I think I'm doing good. that. Yeah. I, I agree. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not well, saying yeah. that. That class. I'm mostly trying to talk through like, yeah, I, there's not like no quarterbacks in this class. Right. So, but I'm I'm mostly trying to talk through like a, a, a mindset shift that I think we need to to make. I, the NFL I can changing. agree. I can agree in the macro. I, I just think it 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 does not. I'm like much more worried that Richardson gets moved on from because the, sure. the 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 play is not there. He's also in his second season and not his first. He I also, just expect yeah. Caleb to play much better. Like I think I think I'm just coming at a fundamentally He's different place from like. This doesn't apply to Caleb because I think Caleb is so good, basically. Yeah, I mean, I, I get it. It's I'm kind of kicking myself because I, I felt like I had a voice in the back of my head. Like I even wrote about this. It, it's like it, if Caleb ends up being bad, my like analysis piece, what I did, my full pre-draft rankings will will look kind of incoherent because I, I kind of wrote like, 2000 words on why I didn't think Caleb was as great of a prospect as everyone thought. And then I was like, ah, everyone else is probably right. He's the one one That's um, how I felt, to be honest, is that I then think yeah. he's as great of a prospect as everyone else. But there is this safety in the consensus 101 in the actual NFL draft, who is a high upside playmaking quarterback, you know, with great, with great tools. Like, okay. I, but he didn't, yeah, I, I agree with that take. But also, I never – did I ever have him quarterback too? No. <laughs> did I ever, ever like, rank that's, like – Right. That's yeah. the thing. Like, I felt like I had, like, these, like, kind of blinking – like, not like I thought he was a bad prospect or whatever. Like, I still thought he was a very good prospect. I, I just didn't – he didn't me grade too. out to me be, too. like, as exceptional for me as I kind of expected he was going to. Like, when I first started, I was like, I'm so excited to look into Caleb Williams yeah. and fall in love, right? And it, and it wasn't quite that. That's exactly but then I never I'm really thinking. took any actions that would – dictate that that's what i thought like i i still ranked him one-on-one um i mean i i did say like you should consider trading out of him and into neighbors so shout out to me for that one but um i i i I don't know i'm a little bit more worried i guess i'm also worried about the payoff right like we're talking about at the high end we're kind of moving quarterbacks down and we're moving wide receivers and um running backs up like if the if the ceiling on because like right now i'm looking at my first round and prior to the season, it was almost all quarterbacks. But like now, I only have let's see, I have five quarterbacks in my first round in Dynasty right now. Um, so yeah, because we're watching every quarterback play like absolute ass, and we're over it. That that was what I kept thinking in my rankings, and we've only gotten through like uh, like the top like twenty four picks. But like I moved guys. Uh, there are some good examples. Like I moved like Herbert way down. I moved yeah. actually. I still have Purdy high because I think Purdy's about to get paid giga money. I, maybe I'll move him down a little bit more. Uh, Goff moved down from initial rankings. Uh, Knicks, a- and then the older guys, like guys like 
I have Levis at like 132. Like these these guys are just zero. Yeah, I need to get Levis way down. They're way uh, down. He's Levis tough. is going to zero. Yeah. I moved I moved Penix way up. Levis is a dude who's going like that's when I talk about Mason I mean, Rudolph's gonna start player. games this year. Yeah. Yeah. This this he's, Baker he's like a perfect example. This I, I I gotta I gotta move that. That's that seems insane. Uh who, who do you that, that is wrong. I, I've Baker. just got him way what happened, high. Dude? You did I, this I, like halfway through week two. <laughs> well, he was in his feelings about Oklahoma getting blasted by <laughs> oh, the Tennessee Volunteers, and he was just thinking about the good times and moving. That Baker was miserable. Up. I do. I want to do. I want to do Garrett Wilson real quick. Um, no, I so don't. here's here's the deal with Garrett Wilson. Garrett Wilson is the Kyle Pitts of Justin Jefferson's. I heard that. <laughs> I heard that on ship chasing, and it has yeah, never no, rung. It's it's, it's just it. never. I've never heard something ring so true. <laughs> Garrett Wilson is the type of guy that we are going to wish cast on and create excuses for forever. But at some point you got to score the points to be treated like a premium point scorer. Mm -hmm. And Gretch in a weird way, because Gretch is so tilted about this Wilson thing, but he actually has got the best analysis on it because he's so close to it, which is this guy's fucking lazy right now. He just, he, he just got lazy and unfocused and is not playing to the best of his capabilities right now. And and Rodgers doesn't seem worried. The team doesn't seem worried. Rodgers looks good. Like I'm not nuking Garrett Wilson to oblivion, but I, I moved him down a good tier in this update. Lazy yeah, seems... I moved him down and I'm with Gretsch. Like I I've been a Wilson truther. I was a Wilson guy. Like before his, before his draft year, I was super, super high on him. I had him, um, had a consensus. I've had him I had a consensus basically every year of his career. So it's not, uh, fun. I was really excited. I thought he was going to go completely nuclear this year. Um, and I'm still pretty hopeful that we're going to end up getting a very big year out of him. Um, like the usage has been totally fine. I think he's what, like 29% um, tar target share or something like it's, it's a high number. I don't have it off the top of my head, but um, so I might've just lied, but uh, the usage has been good. It's just, it's just the efficiency aspect, which is tough because that's always been the case. And I would have thought with Rogers that was going to get solved. And it's like, you look at the plays that are, are going awry and it is definitely uncomfortable. How many of them are his fault? Like um, I, I know Gretsch was agonizing over it. It's been the same thing, but like, he's just not making the right adjustments on some of these back shoulder routes. The attention to detail seems like the, the dumb, the dumb penalties, the not getting your foot down type stuff. Yeah. The, the not getting your foot down for sure was frustrating, but I would just push back on the idea of, of lazy because we know that Rogers is extremely precise in what he's looking for and that, you know, getting on the same page with him is essential. And some of that stuff, like the back shoulder timing and everything, like, he may be, you know, busting his ass, but he's not on the same page mentally with Rodgers. We also Rogers. know that when but why you are you get just watching this... YouTube of Aaron Rodgers from 2012, like eight hours a day? Probably because the recommended videos on that are too extreme. You know, you, you can't be doing that. <laughs> <laughs> but I think, I think eventually he's going to be on the same page with Rodgers. Rodgers, after the game, you know, it was like, once we get on the same page, he was asked about yeah. something else. And he was like, yeah, once we get, what's his number now? Because it's not 17. Five. Once, once, five. Me and once five you get on the same page. Why, once me and why five did he change his page. number from 17, by the way? Famously, Devontae Adams' number. What the Huge fuck? Well, five it, it looks is, way better. Mm, not to Rogers. No, I, I, I got I to gotta say, <laughs> unless you're changing to number one, there is no reason to change away from number 17 if you're playing with Rodgers. Yeah, I, I agree. I really agree. That was a huge mistake. But um, I think, you know, provided they don't like trade for Devontae Adams at some point, obviously that would be a, a disaster scenario. But provided oh, that God. doesn't happen, then I, I think Wilson is going to start emerging more over the course of the end of the season. I, I think they do get on the same page more. Like, that's it's just so essential to what this – so the ceiling of the offense is really dependent on Rodgers and Wilson developing a better connection. And Rodgers seems to be well aware of that. And, and Wilson, I think has the talent to do it, you know? So I guess I'm, I'm just not panicking on it. I, I don't, we all have them ranked similarly. So really it's kind of the way I'm framing it, I guess, more than anything, but. Yeah. Um, I mean, I haven't ranked even higher than Pat. I, I'm just trying to like, yeah. I, I guess I feel a duty to like the people who have listened to me 
talk about Garrett Wilson nothing but positively and overzealously so mm-hmm. for the last three mm-hmm. years I feel like I have like some level of duty to like acknowledge that it's not going as well right. as I would hoped and dreamed um but I definitely do think it's still going to work out it's just like it's one of those things that where where in the middle of a season it's hard to do fantasy analysts where where like you're you have a take and the take's not necessarily going that well and you still think that it's going to eventually turn around but like everyone's yelling at you like hold the l right. hold the l hold, hold the l, the l. Yeah, like, yeah. every day people it's like, really like people to take early l's there's nothing they want right. l's taken early and often and it's like yeah. i don't i'm not really gonna hold the l because I, I do think it's gonna turn around if it doesn't then i'll, I'll hold it at the end of the year but um, like, i also I also do think there's like some movement that's necessary, right? So I did move him down. I moved like Rice ahead of him. I moved Collins ahead of him. Like I'm sure. doing trying to be the responsible adult thing. Speaking of of needing to make movements, you guys couldn't get you guys couldn't get Brock Bowers into your top twenty. What do you what do you you not watch the game? What the fuck? What, I'm the low guy on Brock Bowers now. You're, you're the, you're the... It's Jacob. Give the bear case. Go ahead. Yeah, come on. <laughs> tell, tell us. Tell... I I would I would fuck there there's almost there's almost no trade right now. <laughs> That I wouldn't do to get back. Bowers will be ungettable in Dynasty. One catch yesterday. I don't care, dude. He's already I he's mean, already shown it. We don't like we don't need to the, like the love fest on Brock. Davis Bowers. is There's, right. Davis is right because Adams is gone, dude. Adams is gone. Super gone. Yeah. Pierce so was talking about him yesterday, um, right? This business. The, the business know. decisions. Yes. That was about Adams, wasn't it? It was about Adams. Why do we think it's about yeah. Adams? I'm not saying it's not. It's just why? Why is that the? There's just nothing else he could possibly mean. Who else on that team is even in a position to make a business? It's definitely Devontae Adams. He's the only one with business. He's the only one right, who makes like, any was, money. I just mean like was there was there a particular play that stood out as like a bad effort play? No, I don't. Adams? I don't. I didn't see a play that was Adams not trying. But I I just can't fathom who else it could possibly be about. But us doing a love fest on Brock Bowers right. actually serves no one. Everyone gets it. I think there are some more instructive situations. But if you. Sorry, just mm. if you're gonna be like the way he phrased it was like a threat. Like he was like, if you're making big decisions, we'll make big decisions. Like Devontae Adams is like would love to not be on the Raiders. Like what's what's the threat? Like if, if you're gonna make big decisions, we will give you what you want. And he's like, okay. <laughs> like, but like, but to like, but to fine. but to a guy like to a guy like Pierce, he's like, there's <laughs> nothing worse that you could be than not a part of the team. And Devontae Adams is like, I don't really want to be a part of this particular team. Uh, I super, I super nuked Puka Nakua in my rankings, and I'm yeah, pretty sure, what the hell pretty that? sure I'm right to do it. Not just because he is injured for the immediate production, and because Stafford might retire and all those things, but because we've we've somehow memory hold that the reason why Puka Nakua was a fifth round pick out of BYU was that he was injured every year of his college career, and he made it a year into his NFL career without going on to the IR. I think, I think he might just be yeah. one of these guys. I don't know, man. Is he one of these guys who gets a, a sack who bursts in his knee? Is he one of those classic guys that we always talk about? Well, it was what all, it's all, uh, all, his, all his stuff, all his college so stuff was, was lower guys. body. It was all, it was all lower classic body. He, he, bro- he broke his foot. It's a classic sack burster, dude. Classic sack burster. <laughs> I think, I think, yeah. <laughs> I, I would grade Nakua as a sell right now. I really would. No, dude. Allow no. me to allow me to burst your no. sack on this take, Davis. The okay. Los Angeles Rams just won a game versus the San Francisco 49ers with it's a so three big. wide receiver That's trio so of Demarcus Robinson, yeah. Jordan Whittington, and Tyler Johnson. Like this, I, I understand it's not necessarily a long term tie to Matthew Stafford. I mean, it, it might even go away maybe even in the off season but like puka Nakua is going to be back this year and that's like the this big train thing. is going to find a way to keep thing. rolling and that's puka why Nakua he's going to come back and he's going to score a bunch of points i also think people slightly misremember i i'm going to be i'm, I'm going to borderline sam sherman this right now but i think I people have slightly misremembered the first half of the rams lions game like when puka went no, out he's awesome when he's on the field he's awesome Right, like I just there was like a narrative that emerged was like, oh well, like week one, like Puka got hurt, and like we found out that it always would have been Cup. Like when when Puka went out, it was Cup had five for five and twenty six, and I believe Puka had four for four and thirty five. Like it wasn't like it wasn't that's, some like that's massive the narrative split. That I have said, but I I guess what I would just say the narrative that I actually <clears throat> think there is that like I was unsure if Cup had the ceiling to challenge this dude anymore, and like I think. 
week one shows that he did. Um, and then had the ceiling to take over as the clear number one without him, which is that that's kind of my my favorite cup uh defense there. Go ahead. Oh, cup cup certainly would have smashed um with if he had stayed healthy in, in week two and didn't sprain his ankle. Um, but he did, and I also don't really trust him now as an older player to come back particularly great right. off of a high ankle sprain. Right. Um and I think Puka is probably the more likely of the two to be more resilient to coming back from an injury just since he's a lot younger. Um, and and basically my point is just that like I think people remember that week one was like, oh, Puka got alpha by Cup and then he got hurt. And the, the second part is true. And the first part is true to the extent that Cup was productive, but Puka looked good. Like Puka looked like he was going to have a very good game. He had like four for 35 and a quarter and a half. Like it, it didn't seem like he was in any way bad. It looked like he was quite good. And then he aggravates the injury. So um, I, I'm still bullish on, on Puka Nakua. I think, I think he's a buy. I'm grading him as a buy. I think he's a buy too, because you're, you're going to get him back at the end of the season. There's no target competition outside of cup. Who's also hurt. And I do think, you know, coming back off an injury as an older player, like that's not ideal. So you're going to have a window this season where people are feeling better about Puka than they do now, which I think just by definition means he's not a sell you know, if anything, he's a hold or potentially a buy. So, um, and I, and I do fall in the buy camp. Um, the other thing is that, yeah, I mean, Stafford could retire. So you do, but you have McVeigh, right? Like is McVeigh hanging it up? I guess that would be the the long-term thing for me. Cause I mean, McVeigh's so good. Like they could probably trade for Sam Darnold after the end of the year. And uh, we get McCarthy in Minnesota and Darnold in, in LA and, and everybody's happy. Yeah. Are you sure they want to trade for J.J. Happy. McCarthy after Sam Darnold is named Super Bowl MVP? I mean, maybe you get McCarthy. Maybe maybe um, they just gets McCarthy. Then. All right, I'm back in now. I'm back in. I'm back in if they get if they get J.J. McCarthy after Darnold wins MVP. Uh, I, I, I'm not – Kyle Pitts. Kyle Pitts is a top 40, top 50 dynasty asset. I, I think I think we're Joe over here. I'm also yeah, – you're right. You're right. Some of these I'm are also, to tweak a bit. In this on on Kincaid, I'm like – I'm really out on Kincaid because one, I never thought Kincaid was that good to begin with. Two, I don't even know if the Bills think he's that good anymore. They've turned into a negative PROE team. Now, obviously, a big part of that had to do with, with the Dolphins game. And maybe I'll I'll change my mind over the next couple months. But I, I think Kincaid is like a Philip Dorset ass first round pick. Where basically like he's not he's not bad enough to not be on the field, but he just kind of never ends up being a super relevant fantasy football player like i just i just jacob talked to me i just don't know if he's good enough to earn kelsey level targets sorry i got a work email that i checked for a minute who are you asking me a question about kincaid kincaid what are what are okay. like, i just i feel like kincaid, oh yeah i'm i'm the high guy on him um you, you oh, pass with me. Kincaid. no i'm i'm uh, lowering him as davis makes this case okay uh well i'm about to be abandoned so thanks thanks pat Later, um dude. <laughs> that, is, that, that is so savage davis is like two guys have the exact same rank god of davis pitches to me and bats like oh yeah you're on your own <laughs> you're, on, you're on your own see ya i mean i this feels uh, anyway, back to what we we did I'll, to begin with which is just like these tight ends stink dude these tight ends can't get any targets they can't score any points i'm not paying for it <laughs> all right so having been having been abandoned by by Pat, I feel kind of like Dalton Kincaid. I've been abandoned by all of the Bills' target competition. Um, <laughs> so here's here's here would be the bull case for Kincaid. Um, this is like too simplistic, of course, but one thing I think that is notable right now among the tight end position, and maybe this is just pattern matching bullshit, but I think what makes McBride and Bowers now McBride's concussed, um, so that's unfortunate, but. Um, what potentially makes McBride and Bowers more successful than some of these other tight ends that I think are maybe sim somewhat similarly skilled, I don't know, is the situation is very beneficial where you have one really, really strong alpha wide receiver who lives at kind of a different target depth to them, right? They're more of an intermediate, deeper guy. They get to be the short intermediate complement. And the rest of the surrounding cast is kind of a bunch of nothing, right? It's like you have a, a deep threat who doesn't earn a lot of targets and you have kind of a whatever slot wide receiver. With Laporta, like the trouble for him that he's facing is, you know, and, and this also goes for Andrews, although now he's running four routes a game. So I don't even know what the hell that is. It definitely goes for Kelsey where they have like another, the best wide receiver on their team 
is an is a player who exists in the same area of the field that they do and is better at it, right? Like mm-hmm. Rice is doing mm-hmm. Kelsey things and Amon Ra is doing Laporta things and Flowers is it's a different type of short area target than those guys, but he's still short area target. Um, with Kincaid, he's the only guy outside of the top two that I can squint and be like, I can at least see a ceiling here, right? Like maybe there's no obvious guy in the Bills that's going to prevent him from reaching a ceiling. In a perfect world, maybe Coleman or maybe Shakir develops into being kind of that, a guy. That's the thing is I'm pretty him. sure Coleman is going to end up being better than him. But that's good. I want Coleman to be better than him. Like what, what I don't want from a tight end, like I don't, good. I definitely think Kincaid is not good enough to, um, to be the, the lead to, of to a good this, passing offense. To, I don't want, I don't want teams going into playing the bills, scheming up a way to stop Dalton. Kincaid. Stop I, I don't Kincaid. think that's going to go well. Right. Like you think of like a TJ Hawkinson. You're the talking about TJ Hawkinson. Lions, yeah. This is what you're, when he you're was the, about when he was the, the guy that wasn't good. But when he was the next guy after Jefferson, that was great. That so was like great. If Coleman can be a good downfield guy to where he's maybe not even earning more targets than Kincaid, but is more dangerous from a real life football perspective. That that's the guy that gets the defensive attention. I'm in on that. And then Kincaid can eat underneath. That's fine. I don't even necessarily know if he's good enough for that. It's just the, the reason why I have him at three is it's really, really hard for me to see a ceiling right now for any of these other tight ends. I, I don't think Kincaid has a very high floor. I've never been a big Kincaid guy. But I, I definitely see the possibility of a ceiling for him where I, I can I can squint. Shame you guys don't like Jaston Smith and Jigba. You you guys don't like sixteen target games. You don't like you don't like year two breakouts. Lock it. Yeah, I, I had him in DFS yesterday, so that that lost him five spot five spots out of tilt. And then Gino uh, Gino looks great. JSN, I think I believe when we first did this also by Lock it and Fant yesterday, right? I think, well, yeah, Fant, Fant did finally look good. So when we first did this exercise, I believe I was the lowest on JSN. But, like, basically, I just needed to see proof of concept from JSN at the NFL from level. I, I've now seen it. No, literally. Literally one in this environment, in this scoring environment, the ability to generate a 16-target game in a win for your team, un- like, Un, that is so that is massive that is that is absolutely massive i'm trying to find someone that Karain is way higher than us on um i'll do around. i'll do uh i'll do my i'll do my i'll do my braylon allen bit uh because i i'm way higher on him than you guys Wait, i also you had, someone, you had someone if you scroll up you had someone at 51 that looked like we had like in the 90s kamara kamara i moved up i moved oh, up okay. All I moved up all the dust balls who are active in scoring points. And if you are if you are a dust ball, if you were a guy who could have been acquired for a third a month ago, but you are currently getting the ball 22 times a game and scoring points, way up in my rankings. If you were a dust ball who is injured or not scoring points, Keenan Allen, DeAndre Swift, Dalton. If you just if you are a dust ball who has not generated any points and is unlikely to generate points in the near future, I'm sent I sent you to zero. Um Fair but enough. I, I do, I do want to do the Braylon Allen thing because I think we have a really unique instance of something that we are not going to see very much of in the NFL, which is if you follow the logical conclusion of there have been more explosive running plays than passing plays, which is true. If teams right. want you to run, which is true, and you actually have competent quarterback play on this team, so you're not just going three and out every time, and I'm the literal youngest player in the NFL. And I look like one of the best running backs in the NFL. Basically, if it walks like a duck, if it quacks like a duck, it's probably a duck. That's where I'm at with Braylon Allen. I thought Braylon Allen was awesome as a prospect. He landed in a pretty good situation for running for, for like, obviously Brees wasn't there. It would be a very nutted situation. And if teams are going to be this committed to running the ball anyway, why can't Braylon Allen be more efficient and a higher scoring player on his 11 touches a week than a, a very Montgomery Gibbs situation. Uh, obviously on a much slower paced offense is kind of what I'm viewing it as. So Davis, I, this is, uh, I'm going to paint, I'm going to paint a little picture for you here. Okay. So Brees Hall goes nuts for the rest of the season. Nuts. Okay. The Jets make the playoffs. Very likely, by the way. And, now, Brees is entering year four. He's had an ACL tear. He's got to make sure he gets his money. There's contract oh, boy. type situation 
brewing here. Oh, God. And, yeah. And so there's a breakdown between Brees Hall and the team, much like Le'Veon Bell Le'Veon when he was with Bell. the Steelers. We get the James Conner year two Braylon I'm Allen experience. Up. Oh, I'm moving him up. 81 is not up. high enough. 81 is moving not high up. enough. Moving on up. I just, I, I think, think they, I do they, think he's got some James Conner to his game. It's kind of fun. He, um, he totally does. It's like he, he doesn't he doesn't lose yards. Like he's gonna be he's kind of the opposite of Ken Walker, another guy who I'm higher on. We're like he he his um I don't think his like rush yards over expectation or like explosive runs will ever be that great, but his like success rate is gonna be he's the, super he's high. the sharpen. I mean if we're comparing he's to the Seattle sharp. backfield, yeah, he's, he's way sharp. better sharpen. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Brees is better walker and he's better sharp. So it's just a better version of the Seattle backfield. Yeah. Um yeah. I mean, I, I guess, so the concern here is that he, next year, Brees is still under contract and he's going to be behind him. But I guess, you know, your ranking does make sense from the perspective of we're also going to be looking for really high upside handcuff running backs to draft in best ball and everything. And he's just one of the most obvious guys. Like I could see him going in the ninth round or 10th round of best ball drafts because he's. I just moved him up like, to 100. I moved him up 26 yeah. spots. Uh, Thanks, man. Thanks for abandoning point. me. Yeah, well, payback. <laughs> I just you, um, you guys you guys will see this in general. I just I'm I just moved. <laughs> I moved running backs up in general, and I moved wide receiver three types down a lot. Like I moved like despite nothing really bad. In fact, good things happening to Jalen McMillan. I moved Jalen McMillan down despite Jalen McMillan basically beating expectations and getting on the field. I I think that's the right way to play the game right now. Now, obviously. It, you have to apply a lot of context to the individual ranking because what use is Alvin Kamara on your on your shitty team that is scoring no points? You should get rid of him immediately. Right. But in terms of just being realistic about how fantasy points are being scored right now, I, I you just give even and I'm even projecting this out. Like I don't think there's some magic solve that's going to make the NFL better at coaching and offensive line play next year either. I think this is like a multi year issue. So I moved running backs up a lot. Yeah, I think that that is probably fair, non-derogatory. Um, I moved Allen up mostly because I, I did a full ranks update prior to the last week where I was pretty thorough. And then like we just watched this past week and I kind of haphazardly tried to adjust as I went. And there was just some guys where, as we're talking, I clearly didn't adjust enough. So like right. I, I'd also just like forgot to move Deontay Johnson up, for instance, that, that was a mistake, just moved him up. Um, Braylon was a guy where, I moved him up, but then like as soon as I saw Davis start cooking, um, yeah, I realized yeah. I didn't move him up enough. So uh, he yeah. looked he looks really really impressive these last two weeks. And like I'm not worried about it for Hall. He's still going to get a ton of high value touches. His role's been really good. I'm not but really worried about Allen, it for Hall either. If Hall if if Hall uh, gets hurt, like Allen is like a top three running back. Like it's it's the concern for Allen. I think is that Hall is really good. He's a more explosive player and he's a really good receiver and he's also got size. So, I mean, he doesn't have Braylon Allen size, but he has enough size to be used at the goal line and unlikely to ever just like have Allen become the goal line back and Brees is getting pulled from the, you know, the goal line situation. So you do run the risk of Braylon Allen just being like one of these guys that we dream about who never really gets a shot. He, he could absolutely, he could absolutely be Ben Tate, Tony Pollard, yada, yada. So, I mean, it's, it's just exactly right. Like the guy who looks really good. We liked him as a prospect. Then he goes into a good situation, scores some fantasy points is like kind of useful for you in a way, but never reaches his final ceiling because by the time he gets well, I guess by the time he gets to his second contract, he'll be 23 years well, old. So maybe, maybe that was won't exactly be that what big I was going to bring up. <laughs> just that was what I was going to bring up. It's like where his age really helps you is that most of the time with these really good backups, the problem is they're is 26. The, the earliest you can realistic, like Brees yeah. Hall is so good that uh, notwithstanding Pat's um, legendary scenarios on Braylon Allen article, um, <laughs> that. Uh, Brees Hall is going to get extended by the team, right? He's clearly good yeah, to, yeah, to earn yeah. a contract extension. So Braylon Allen yes. is going to be in a tough spot from that respect. But it, it is possible. Now, it's also possible the Jets will really annoy us and they'll extend both Brees Hall and Braylon Allen. 
and Braylon Allen will play his entire career as Brees Hall's. Back. I think Braylon but wants more for himself than that. Honestly, I hope that that's true. Right. So, I so there is right. a possibility that like at least a very realistic possibility that entering year five, Braylon Allen will be paid to be a legitimate clear cut starting running back of another team. And the problem with that for most of these guys is like for Tony Pollard or like for potentially Jalen Warren, like by the time that that happens, the the player is kind of on the back nine of their career age wise where there's only so high you can push them and the value bet doesn't have that much ceiling to it with Allen, he will legitimately be 24 in his fifth year so yeah he's he's gonna be younger than um i don't know is he gonna be younger than ray davis is today like on a second contract i, think I believe ray davis close. is already it's 24. Be close so like so there's not right but like okay so jalen warren is a restricted free agent after this season and like Najee's then he'd be an unrestricted free agent. And uh, Najee's an unrestricted free agent. And Jalen Warren has had been, you know, heading into the season incredibly efficient, very impressive. He's now he's getting an MRI on his knee today, apparently. So that's that's pretty bad. But it's been a rough start to the season. Dealt with a hamstring injury, dealing with his knee thing. Now um, we're not excited about Jalen Warren. It's taken three games from us to go from very excited to not excited at all. Do you care now? that Najee Harris is not going to be there next year? Do you care that, you know, potentially Warren could be the starting running back on a different team in 2020, 2026, let's say? You, you don't, really. You know, we're, we're kind of, because we're not excited about Warren now, after three injury play games, all of a sudden, that long-term view is just like, who, who cares? That's like two, three years from now. And I think that's what you risk with Allen, where I, no, I would that's, just say this, that's a good point, Pat. This is not a time to buy Allen. This is a no, time to, to move time him to up. Buy your, Allen. Yeah, mental ranking. I've seen enough from this dude that if there's if if I see a buy window open later, I'm gonna go pounce on it and I'm gonna take the long term view. But if you're taking the long term view at a time when people are excited, you're gonna lose. You're gonna lose value because eventually that excitement will dry up. That's just the way football works. Yeah. Yeah. Awful time. Awful time to buy. All right. I got to bail here in a second. So I will each give you the floor to castigate the other very quickly for a guy that we are not high enough on uh, someone that, that either you are very high on uh, and, and we are very low on. Um, yeah. This Mayfield ranking. Right, I I, find I'm, I'm going to change, that. I'm change that. I'm going to change that very here. soon. Uh, yeah. Basically these rankings are very funny. It's just all, it's just all, me being extremely high on dusty olds who are scoring points and just nuking, just nuking anyone who is, is running. Oh my God. You have Baker at 39. That is, <laughs> that is an error. It is an error. It will be, it will be rectified. I will, I will you guys have me as the high guy on Pittman. Now I got to change that. Jeez. Yeah. Uh, you're the high guy on Rashad white. Uh, I remain the high guy. <laughs> That's got to feel nice. Like I said, like Rashad white, that's yeah, a good example. There's Rashad an example, White. yeah. Rashad White. No, no, no. You, you guys are right. Yeah, I'm, I'm still tweaking a bunch of these. So he's a good. He's Rashad White. That's a good sell low. It's over. Rashad White, really good <laughs> sell. Great sell, sell low. Yeah. Great sell low. Yeah. 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 Couldn't agree more there. Uh, no, uh, I just, I just like lowered him thirty spots. Yeah. Another, another great sell low uh, is DeAndre Swift, who had 13 carries for 20 yards against the Colts. Here, week. let's just uh, let's just let's just. Can you castigate us on uh, on 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 Deontay Johnson because I think you're right and I need to to raise him. But, oh, um, I, I get to I get yeah, to wax poetic about Deontay Johnson, Please. my favorite Please. activity. Um, yeah, Bank Examiner, you did not anticipate Andy Dalton turning this puppy around here. <laughs> Bank Examiner um, is not ready. Uh, yeah, I mean Deontay Johnson had good usage each of the first two weeks. He was already getting a ton of targets per route. It didn't matter because Bryce Young sucked. Now we finally got to see the offense look competent. I don't think that the Raiders are even that bad of a defense. So, like, I'm not saying they're going to score 35 every week or whatever, but I think this is going to be a functional offense now. I, I believe in Canals as a play caller, and I think Eddie Dalton can be, like, a pretty middling quarterback. Uh, and Deontay did what he always does, which is earn a million targets. Um, he could have a bigger game. He dropped a touchdown, which is kind of part of the Deontay Johnson experience. So um, we got that. But he looked dynamic. He made a couple of yak plays. Like it, it very much seemed like the whole game plan was built around him in the passing game. And he Season, looked really impressive. Er, career uh, high in yards for Deontay yeah, Johnson. Best career quarterback high. play he's ever had. 
Yeah. I, I think he could be like a mid-range wide receiver two rest of the season. I, I don't see why he couldn't be. He's going to have like 28% target share. And now I think he'll play in like the, like I didn't think it was going to happen this way. Right. But the, the case I made for him preseason was everyone thinks Panthers can be the 32nd best offense. They can just be like the 20th best offense. Then we're going to have lift off on Deontay Johnson. And I thought that would happen by Bryce Young maybe being better. Yeah. Apparently it's gonna happen with Andy Dalton. I'll take it. We need <laughs> we need the fine. Star Wars meme on uh on, you know the, the Bryce Young stacks. Deontay Johnson's just went off in week three. So my Bryce Young stacks are looking great, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Incredible. All right, Kareem, castigate us and then we are gonna get out of here. I, and I don't do think I don't think I've enough time to cast I didn't ever pick anyone out to castigate you guys for. Uh that's fine. So. That's fine. We uh we gotta we gotta leave we gotta leave the people wanting. We will do <laughs> We will do another iteration of this. Uh, I don't know. Maybe after week eight. Maybe after. That's maybe right. let's do it. Maybe let's do it after um, Xavier Worthy has scored his first fifty-plus yard touchdown of the season. Let's, that's, do, it. Uh, let's do it after Drake May's first start. So that's yeah. good. You know yeah. what? That's good. That's so good. We'll do it. Yeah. We'll see you. We'll see you. <laughs> we'll see you in. Uh, we'll see you in twenty twenty four. Everyone. We'll be yeah. back. Make sure that you're checking out. As Ron Mayo would say, thinking. "This podcast is on hold until it's not." <laughs> It's on, yeah. it's on hold until it's not. We're, we're evaluating every week. We're evaluating every single week. <laughs> evaluating every week. Thinking about thinking, legendaryupside.com, patreon.com slash davismatic. If you want access to these rankings, we will be back when Drake May starts a game for the New England Football Patriots. See you then.